My name is, uh, is Chuck Wallace. I'm uh, an associate dean for curriculum and instruction um, in the college, and um, I'm sort of the, uh, the MC for this, for this event. Um, and uh, what we're going to do um, uh, for the next, uh, next hour or so um, is uh, give you a, a little uh, overview of um, some of the, the people who uh, you are going to be, um, you know, you're going to meet uh, dur during your, uh, your first year, um, uh, associate some faces with the, the people. Um, and uh, uh, we're going to have a, a couple of activities where we um, uh, have run through some of the kind of practical aspects of taking a class online. Um, and we'll even, you may even learn a thing or two. Um, we've got a couple of our in, uh, uh, instructors uh, teach some of the introductory courses. Um, and there's going to be an opportunity um, toward the end to um, talk with the uh, chairs of the two departments within the College of Computing, the uh, Computer Science Department and the Applied Computing Department. Um, so uh, there's going to be sort of a, a variety of, uh, of things to, to, um, to do here. Um, we've also got a presentation from the uh, Copper Country Coders uh, student group. Um, that's a group that does outreach with uh, local um, middle and high school students um, and teaches them about computer, computer science and programming. So um, let me uh, move on. I'm going to um, introduce you to um, Adrienne Minarek, who is the dean of our college, and she's going to say a few words of welcome. So that's basically all I wanted to say. It's wonderful having you here. We are so excited to have you starting uh, at Michigan Tech this fall. And while this fall is a very unique one <laughs> for us, um, we don't think it changes anything, um, that there is a very unique um, experience, learning experience that you're going to have here, and the attributes of tech that make it um, an immersive environment that allow you to learn from experiences all remain the same. Um, and our faculty who repeatedly go the extra mile to make it just um, an outstanding high quality learning experience um, are all here. So while there are some modifications, some flexing between the face-to-face -face and the online format. Um, we want to make sure that you know that we're always just a click away. Um, and we'll, we'll be here during this transition. So it's wonderful having you here. We're extremely excited um, within the College of Computing and the two departments, the Department of Computer Science and the Department of Applied Computing to welcome you. Great, uh, thanks, Adrian. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, take a couple of minutes and introduce you to a couple of people who are uh, very important for you to to meet. Those are our, our academic advisors. Um, these are people who um, are committed to helping you succeed um, as as students throughout all the years that you're at Michigan Tech. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, Denise Landsberg, who's the advisor for the Computer Science Department. Uh, Denise, are you are you uh, are you there? You want to? Yes, I'm here. Hi, hi. Welcome everybody. Um, uh, my role is to assist you in scheduling, um, academic planning, any questions, concerns, problems. I'm here for you. Uh, Kay, our other advisor, is here for you as well. Um, we really look forward to meeting you. Uh, we will be reaching you out to you in a couple weeks to send you a date for. Uh, when we're going to meet with you in orientation and to finish scheduling and to answer any questions or concerns that you have. Mm -hmm. So I look forward to meeting you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Denise. Um, and our other uh, advisor for uh, advisor for applied computing is uh, Kay Oliver. Um, Kay, do you want to say hi and say a few words? Hello. Um, we're looking forward to seeing you. As Denise said, I'm here to help answer any questions about life at Michigan Tech, about your academic program, about some of the other options available to you. So we can't wait to see you in about four weeks. Great. Uh, thanks, both of you. Um, uh, we have, uh, the, the faculty um, 
were asked to put together a uh, little uh, introductory videos to introduce themselves uh, to you. Um, I'm gonna go back a couple of slides to the very first slide. I've got a link here, uh, mtu.edu slash computing slash meet. Um, if you go to that, um, that web address, you'll, uh, you'll find um, a sort of compilation video of, um, of ev everybody. Um, but, th but then also uh, underneath, underneath that, you'll see their individual videos from individual faculty. So um, if you want to um, dig deeper and, and, and look at um, uh, uh, people's individual messages, um, they're there. Um, everyone's excited to have you with us. Um, and we, uh, at this time, we're gonna um, show the, uh, the compilation video. Um, and I'm going to share my uh, video screen with you so that um, you can get the sort of overview of, um, of our uh, in, uh, greeting messages to you. Um, let's see, a sec. Let's see, let's do this. Welcome to Michigan Tech. My name is Adrian Minneritz and I'm the Dean of the College of Computing, which has two departments, computer science and applied computing. Our undergraduate degrees include computer science, computer network and system administration, cybersecurity, electrical engineering technology, mechatronics, software engineering, and we closely coordinate with computer engineering. We have an outstanding team of professors. Browse below to meet your instructors and to learn more about their research and the student teams that they advise. We are extremely excited to welcome you to Michigan Tech and our unique community, where you will learn in highly ranked programs with faculty who truly care about your individual success and your long-term well-being. Welcome. Hi, I'm Linda Ott. I'm a professor of computer science, and I'm also the department chair for the Department of Computer Science. I've been with Michigan Tech actually since before the beginning of the Department of Computer Science back in the 1980s. I look forward to seeing all of you this fall. In fact, those of you who are in software engineering and computer science, you'll be seeing each other weekly in CS1000. CS1000 is a course that will expose you to the breadth of the field, give you some sense of research opportunities, give you a sense of the, of the different career opportunities. When I'm not teaching CS1000, I teach our social and ethical aspects of computing course. Um, my research interests are in computer science education. When I'm not doing research, I enjoy this beautiful part of the country that we live in. Yes, I am actually at home. I'm not on vacation. I get to live here. Um, and this is where I've had to work the last few months. Darn. I look forward to seeing you all this fall. Welcome to the department. Hi, everybody. This is Dan Furman. I'm the interim department chair for Applied Computing. I'm really excited that you're going to be joining us here this year, and I hope you find what you're looking for here at Michigan Tech. We have a lot of different programs, uh, a lot of different things to offer, and they're all designed to help you be productive and successful as you start on your career path, which you're beginning right now. So outside the university, I have a couple of hobbies. I really enjoy music. I play keyboards uh, with a couple of bands here in Houghton. And uh, I also enjoy skiing a lot. So um, uh, brownie points, if you can uh, identify what's in the background image here, uh, I'll give you a hint. It's not Houghton. Wouldn't that be nice? See you soon. Take care. Hi, everyone. My name is Chuck Wallace. I am uh, on top of Mount Ripley Ski Hill right now. I'm an associate professor of computer science. I've been here at Tech for 20 years. The courses that uh, I tend to teach are in mathematical foundations of computer science, uh, software engineering, and I also teach a course on um, ethical and social aspects of computing. The kind of work that I do for research involves um, uh, looking at how people learn about computer technology. Uh, I hope you get up here at the top of the hill and enjoy the view sometime. Welcome to Michigan Tech. Hi, I'm Tim Havens. I'm Associate Dean for Research and the William and Gloria Jackson Associate Professor of Computer Systems in the College of Computing at Michigan Tech. Feeling good and living great. Not only am I a Michigan Tech professor, but I'm a Michigan Tech alumni. And as a student, back, well, I won't tell you when, I used to love to come to places like this, the Frida Roos.
At Michigan Tech, we love to foster experiences in undergraduate research with our students. So when you come here, I want you to come talk to me about the research we do in my lab. Artificial intelligence, robotics, we have a lot of fun doing it, and it's exciting too. Hi everybody, my name's Todd Arney. Uh, I've been teaching at Tech for just over 10 years now. You might see me in classes uh, like uh, cyber ethics, uh, Microsoft system administration, Linux fundamentals, and uh, cybersecurity too, which uh, again is a, a really, really interesting class. So uh, my, my job is as faculty is to help you as a student succeed. I'm, I feel really uh, excited to be able to bring my practical real world experience, almost 20 years of system administration out in the field and bring that into the classroom. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to working with you and, and your classes over your academic career. Hello everyone, my name is Garkin Lechlola and I'm a lecturer at the Computer Science Department uh, at Tech. I mean, you're very likely to see me in courses that cover the fundamentals of computer science. I'm involved with computer architecture research. Outside of teaching and research, I uh, enjoy spending time uh, cooking and reading and uh, spending time with my cats. Welcome to Tech, and we're glad to have you here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Michigan Tech. My name is Laura Brown. I'm an Associate Professor of Computer Science, and I've been here at Michigan Tech for about 11 years. You first might see me in a course such as Discrete Structures, or more likely in one of the upper-level elective courses. I'm also the Director of Michigan Tech's Master's Program in Data Science. So if you're interested in pursuing a career related to AI, machine learning, data science, or in that direction, feel free to come talk to me. My research is in um, the area of using AI and machine learning to solve complex problems. And this is, I hope you have a great semester. Reach out to us, your faculty, your TAs, your learning center coaches, your advisors, and more. We're all here to help and assist you as you learn. Hope you have a great semester. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Yukai and uh, I'm a professor uh, in the Department of Applied Computing and I mainly associate with the Computer Network and the System Administration Program, the CNSA Program, and also the Cybersecurity Program. I've been working at TAG for over 15 years. I mainly teach cybersecurity courses uh, like SAT 3812, Cybersecurity 1, SAT 11, security and privacy, and also a few new cybersecurity courses. Uh, my research interests mainly in cybersecurity. Uh, there is a student organization named Red Team, which focuses on cybersecurity as well. I'm the faculty advisor, and uh, there are a lot of fun stuff like uh, cyber training, cyber competition. So if you are interested, uh, feel free to join the Red Team. Hello, everyone. I'm Bo Chen. I'm assistant professor in sales department. Have a great, wonderful new semester. Hi everyone, my name is Pani Hazave. I'm a lecturer at College of Computing and I normally teach EE, EET, mechatronics and robotic courses. And this coming fall, I'll be teaching controls, circuits to digital logic and basic electronics. Do not hesitate to contact me if you want to talk about something. It could be about my course, it could be about other things on campus. What I teach you is fun and important, and I mean, obviously, and I'm so excited for this semester. It's going to be a little bit not ordinary, but it's a good learning opportunity for all of us to see how we can live and learn like that. Hello, my name is Guy Hembra. I'm an associate professor in the College of Computing's Applied Computing Department, and I'm also the director of the Health Informatics Graduate Program. Um, this year, I'll be teaching courses in security and privacy, the use of artificial intelligence in health, clinical decision modeling, and population health informatics. So my research, like the courses that I teach, uh, focused around artificial intelligence and sophisticated network architectures. And we're very excited um, for you to be coming to Michigan Tech, so welcome, and we look forward to seeing you soon. My name is Scott Cool. I'm an associate professor of computer science. I've been at Michigan Tech since about 2009. I regularly teach uh, graphics, which is an upper level course where students learn about uh, OpenGL rendering and a little bit about ray tracing. I also advise the Husky Game Development Enterprise, which is a hands-on group where students try to write video games over the course of the school year. And even if you aren't interested in game development, it's a great software development experience. 
Um, VR is my main area of research. I do work with them on displays, also trying to understand how people perceive space in VR and trying to make VR more useful. So if you're interested in any of those things, um, please come uh, talk to me at some point. Hi, my name is Nilo Peronder. I'm an associate professor of computer science. I came to Michigan Tech 21 years ago. I teach a required course called Formal Models of Computation and I teach basics of computing, models of computing from very simple machines to sophisticated computers. I also teach elective courses in, in artificial intelligence. What is artificial intelligence? My definition is that it is the science of exceptions. It requires intelligence to respond to situations that you have never seen before. Up until now, we have been creating algorithms that are written by humans and run by computers. Now we can create programs that can create algorithms to respond to exceptions. I think that is very cool. If you think so, contact me and send me your thoughts. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. Hello, my name is Soner Ender. I'm a professor in the Department of Computer Science. I have a question for you. What is the coolest thing in computer science? That's right, the computer itself. The computer with its sophisticated structure is one of the marvels of our creative work. As a computer scientist, you should know the machine, bottom up, top down, inside out, outside in. That means knowing and understanding the hardware and the system software. My research area is computer systems and architecture. With several NSF funded projects, a number of PhD and master's students, as well as undergraduate researchers, we are always trying to build better computers. I teach systems programming and computer architecture classes. If the computer itself intrigues you, you should talk to me, virtually or otherwise. Keep safe. Hello, I am Robert Pastel, Associate Professor of Computer Science. I have taught and done research at Michigan Tech for 20 years. I teach user interface design and implementation in the computer science capstone course in your design client. I am also a advisor for Hyde, the humane interface design enterprise. Hyde also develops web applications for clients. My research interests are a mix of developing and evaluating web applications. Locally, I collaborate with professors in the social science department developing the Tijuana Time Traveler a geohistorical citizen science project. I hope to see you later in your academic career. Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Donald Tuck. I came on to Michigan Tech as professor of practice uh, to bring some of this healthcare knowledge that I have into the arena of health informatics. And so the idea here is to connect students and faculty with these clinicians and together solve some of these problems in health informatics. Uh, so that's what I'm here to do, and I'm hoping uh, many of you will be interested in health informatics and want to come over and actually do some of this work. Welcome. Hi, my name is Nadir Rawashna. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Applied Computing. Welcome to Michigan Tech. The courses I teach are mainly in the bachelor level programs of electrical engineering technology and mechatronics. They include advanced electronic circuits where students learn how to design simulate and build and test analog circuits based on operational amplifiers. I also advise students in their senior design year where they perform a project based on the skills they have acquired. And my research is uh, basically focused on image analysis and mobile robotics and mechatronics. If students are interested, I'm very happy to welcome them in person. And welcome again. Hello, my name is Timothy Van Wagner. I'm a lecturer here at Michigan Technological University. I teach for the Computer Network and System Administration degree. You will have me in a number of different classes within CNSA, Computer OS and Architecture, Network Administration 1, Network Administration 2, Wireless System Administration, Digital Forensics and Analysis, and the storage area networking class. Uh, I do like to do uh, a couple of things outside of Michigan Tech as well. Uh, I do quite a bit of consulting for a number of different network communication projects for businesses and personal installation. Hi, my name is Keith Burton. I'm an associate professor in the 
computer science department. So you're likely to see me in your first or second year in the course CS 1142, Programming at the Hardware Software Interface. Uh, my research interests are in human-computer interaction, so I do a lot of work with building intelligent systems that make use of uh, different sorts of probabilistic input methods, things like tapping on a touch screen, using speech recognition. And in particular, I'm interested in how do we build interfaces that are accessible to people despite uh, limitations they may have due to, uh, say, a physical disability. So maybe how do you do text entry if you're blind? How do you um, communicate if uh, you can't speak? So welcome to Michigan Tech. And I look forward to seeing you uh, in my course. Hello, I'm James Walker, a lecturer in the computer science department. I primarily teach courses about professional software development and industry, such as team software project, software quality assurance, and software processes and management. I got my PhD doing virtual reality research, but nowadays my research is all pedagogical in nature. I like practicing karate, getting out in nature, writing novels, drawing comics, designing and playing RPGs, and creative things of that sort. Study hard and good luck. Hi, I'm Dunnan Wan. I'm a professor of computer science. I've been working at tech for 17 years. I teach programming languages and uh, introduction to algorithms, both of which are actually very related to my research. My research is focused on computer systems, especially on memory systems optimization, which involves compiler, computer architecture, operating systems, and cloud computing. One of my recent NSF-funded projects apply uh, machine learning techniques to improve system performance. Another NSF project models and improve data center cloud uh, caching systems. Uh, feel free to contact me if you're interested in this topic. More to, uh, more to see at, the, um, at our uh, website, the, uh, the link that's, um, that was given in the chat there. Um, I'm going to, uh, to move on and we're going to um, uh, have some time with uh, Brianna Betten, um, who's a new assistant professor in, in uh, the computer science department. Um, uh, Brianna is, uh, is uh, someone who you're going, if you're in uh, uh, computers, there she is, uh, as who you um, will ha have um, uh, time with. She's teaching the, our introductory programming um, course. Uh, and she's going to give a, a little uh, intro about uh, some of the fundamentals of uh, computer science course uh, involving stuffed animals. Also, if any of you see me looking over this way, I am not ignoring you. I have a second computer laying over here. You may see there's a second me in the chat. Um, that is because this camera is on one computer and the chat's over here because I want to read if you all have uh, something to respond since this is interactive. <laughs> All right, so I teach uh, CS 1121 Intro to Programming. So if you are a computer science student, software engineering, and you're going to be starting to learn to compute it, um, to learn about computing, learn about programming, you'll be seeing quite a bit of me. So today I figured why not talk about the bits that go into computing bits. So, boop, cool. All yeah. right, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so. No matter how complex everything that goes into a computer is, and we know that there's so much complex data and amazing things that our computers can do, all of that information and all of the things that we're programming boils down to binary. And I'm sure that most of you have heard that term at one point or another before. Binary is the idea of counting information in base two. So you've probably heard about binary being ones and zeros and they're all flying past and it's crazy or whatever. It's not too crazy. We're gonna learn about it. Um, the computer works with ones and zeros, but you probably learned to count uh, in base 10. So you're used to things being base 10. Computers are used to things being in base two. What base two means is that instead of the powers being the way that we expect them to be how we normally count, they are powers of two instead. So I have some cards down here that are similar to what we see in our base 10 counting. Your ones place is 10 to the zero. It's one times whatever values at that place. Your tens place is 10 to the first times whatever numbers in that place. And of course, your hundreds place is 10 to the second times whatever number is in that place. This is the way you're used to counting, where these all would make up a number, your ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. In computing and binary, it's base two. So instead of it being 10 to the zero, it's two to the zero. 
then we have two to the first, two to the second. I don't have to keep holding them up. You'll get the idea. Two to the third, two to the fourth, two to the fifth, two to the sixth, and two to the seventh. Does anyone know off the top of their head what number two to the seventh is? You can type it in chat. I have some experience with Twitch, so I am checking it out over here. If anybody's got any idea what two to the seventh is. All right, Emmett and Ryan, 128. It's literally on your screen. You are right, Michael. Way to make use of your resources, too. Ooh, Vessel, you're getting ahead of yourself there with 256. I like it. Um, 128 is 2 to the 7th. So this Kirby over here, you might see that we have an, an extra chonky plushie over here. I've tried to make the plushies relative in size to the numbers. He represents a 128 being present in our number, just like if it had been the thousands place, he would represent something times a thousand in a base 10 number. He represents a 128 being present. Triceratops represents a 64. Mr. Moose, a 32. The Husky is a 16. The Unicorn's an eight. Little Pikachu's a four. Neopets Psy Bunny is a two. And then we've got a little Coca-Cola deer as a one. So all of these are the bits that we're gonna use to understand a number. So I'm gonna take Kirby off the table here. I'm gonna take the Triceratops off. This one, this one, yeah, let's go with this one. So to try to figure out what number this is, we wanna figure out if an, a stuffed animal is present or absent. So we don't have, a, well, we do have a stuffed animal at two to the zero. So we know that we have to count this place value. We don't have a stuffed animal at two to the first. There's nothing there. So we're not gonna count that place value. Pikachu's here, so we can count two to the second. Is there a stuffed animal right here? There is not. So we're not gonna count that value. A Little hard to tell, but there's nothing here. Mr. Moose has some large legs, but Mr. Moose is here. So we have two to the fifth and nothing beyond him. So I flipped these all over because these are the values that we're gonna be looking at. Why don't you move on forward here, Chuck? Boop. All right. Now, a single bit by itself, just one single stuffed animal, one single Coca-Cola deer here, it's a single one or a zero, but we get complex information by having bits together. These stuffed animals, they're not in isolation. They're all supposed to be considered together. Each of these bits build up into more information so that we can interpret it beyond just a single one and zero. So that's how you get from bits to bytes, from bytes to gigabytes, petabytes, and then we get into like teraflops, we get real big. So when all our stuffed animals were on the table, how many of them were there? How many placards do I have out here? I've got Kirby, Triceratops, Moose, Cybunny, Pikachu, Deer, Husky, and Unicorn. How many did I put out here? All right, I've got an eight from Michael and an eight from Kevin. Yeah, does anyone have any idea why I would choose eight bits? Does anyone have any idea why eight specifically was the number that I picked? Kevin says eight bits equals a byte, and so does Jack, yes. Eight bits is a byte of information. So when you hear about gigabytes and megabytes, that's thousands and hundreds of bytes. And bytes are eight bits, eight single one zero presence or absence pieces of information that are considered together. All right, boop. So we've got eight bits on our table. So now let's take them off again and think about what number is being represented. So I had Kirby and Triceratops gone. These two were gone. And this one. We had already seen if a stuffed animal was present or absent. And we put a zero, I flipped over the card, to indicate the absence. So let's draw out the binary number that we have going on here. 
Now, just like with normal numbers, the higher order things go to the left and the smaller order things go to the right. So if we're gonna start writing from left to right, we're gonna start with this. Is there anything on this placard right now? Is that stuffed animal existing? No, it is not. So we're gonna put a zero for the absence of that stuffed animal. What about the one after it? Is this stuffed animal here? Nope, it also is not. So another zero. Mr. Moose is here. That means that we should indicate a one. We've got a presence of something in that spot. Nothing here and nothing here. So two more zeros are gonna go up. We do have a Pikachu. So we're gonna put a one here. Nothing in this spot. But then there's something at the very end. So the binary number that's represented here by the presence or absence, exactly, Joggy. Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one. So what we were trying to figure out is what places of two do we have to consider? Boop. All right. So each position is a plate power of two. So this top order one here was our two to the seventh, two to the sixth, two to the fifth, two to the fourth, two to the third, two to the second, two to the first, and two to the zeroth, or the ones. So now let's try to calculate what number our stuffies are telling us. And I know some of you have already accomplished it. <laughs> so we don't have any two to the power of sevens. So we're not gonna have to add anything in association with that. That number is not present in this information. Two to the sixth is also not present. The two to the fifth is. And two to the fifth, if I flip over my card, I had it written on the back here, it is 32. So two to the fifth power is 32. That's gonna be important to figuring out what information is presented here because the one indicated a 32 was present. Two to the fourth is 16, we don't have any of those. Two to the third is eight, also none of those. Two to the second is four, we do have one of those. So we have a 32 and a four. Now two to the first, nothing there. But two to the zeroth power, we have one of those. And two to the zeroth power is one. So just like Michael said, the numbers that have to go into this are 32, four, and one. Now we can add all of these values together to get the number in binary that the stuffed animals were representing. So 32 plus four is 36, plus one, 37 is the resulting number from the binary that the stuffed animals showed us. Boop. All right, so now let's think about if all of the stuffed animals were back on the table, what's the highest number that we can possibly represent when we've got every animal here, it's one, 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 one. What is that number? So we have to do all of the powers added together. Anybody got an idea what that number is? You've got 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. Caleb with the 255. And Michael, lowest would be zero, highest would be 255. Yes, and Jaggy comes in with the total number of values. 256. If you've ever heard of something being 256 color, for example, or 256 in any correlation to computers, what they're talking about is the total number of values that can be represented with a byte. If we had no stuffed animals on the table, we just sweep them all off, we'll have zero. If we leave them all on, 
255. So we have 256 total values that our stuffed animals can give us. And as a consequence, a byte can represent a number up to 256. Boop. All right, so I've got a random number generator up here. We're going to pick a random number from the generator from 0 to 255. And we're going to try to build the stuffy binary that we're going to need. So I'm going to run the randomizer here. We got 45 is our number. All right, so the number we're trying to build here in, from base 10 to binary is 45. So what I like to do is I lay out my places that I'm going to have to figure out if there's a value for. Two to the fifth, two to the fourth, two to the third, two to the second. Give myself all these blanks so I got a workspace and I'm kind of running off the page, but that's life. Okay, so to figure out how to convert a base 10 number to binary, we have to figure out the largest place that can go into that base 10 number. So if we've got 45 up here, Kirby represents 128. Can 128 go into 45? Is that possible for 128 to be in a number that goes in 45? No, it is not. All right, Kirby gets eaten. Goodbye, Kirby. What about Mr. Triceratops? Can 64 go into 45? Poor Kirby indeed, but he's napping. He'll be okay. Still says no, 64 cannot go into 45. All right, what about 32? Does 32 go into 45? Yeah, it does. So Mr. Moose gets to stay for another day. So what we do then is we've gotten rid of Kirby. So we have a zero up here in the two to the seventh place. We also got rid of the Triceratops. So we have a zero in the two to the sixth place. Now we know Mr. Moose has to be in here. So we put a one in the two to the fives place because we know that 32 goes into 45. But now we have to make sure that we're considering what's left over. So we're going to have to subtract 32, Mr. Moose's number, from 45. We end up with 13. So from now on, we're thinking about does 13 fit any of these values? So now we've got Mr. Husky as 16. Does 16 go into 13? No, it does not. All right, goodbye, Mr. Husky. We'll see you soon. So we go ahead and we get our zero up here. What about eight? Does Charlie the Unicorn go into 13? Does eight go into 13? Yes, it definitely does. Nice job, everybody. So we get a one up here, and now we have to remember to take that eight out of what we had left, 13 minus eight. Now we have to think about five. All right, can four go into five? Can Mr. Pikachu stick around? Yes, he can. I see you've got the solution there, Vassell. Crushing it. All right. So we'll subtract Mr. Pikachu's value, and we're left with a one. Can two go in one? I'm going to go ahead and answer that for you. No, it can't. So we're going to put a zero in that spot, but one can go into one. So the last number that we fill in here is our final one for the ones place. We leave Mr. Deer on the table. One minus one is zero. So we've managed to convert the base 10 number 45 to its binary representation. Zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one. Boop. All right, so if you want some homework, you could try to figure out some binary numbers on your own. Um, if you'd like to email me your solutions or if you want to email me questions, I am always down to be emailed about computing stuff. So please 
feel free to. You can try to figure out these numbers, try to figure out some other numbers, do some other cool binary stuff. Just, you can let me know what's going on. All right, boop. So if you were wondering about binary beyond these ones and zeros that seem like we don't interact with them at all, there are actually a lot of ways that you might have encountered binary in your day-to-day -day life on the internet. If you've ever, for example, used a color code, uh, one of those hashtags with the uh, FF00CC or FFFFFF is uh, white, if you've ever used one of these codes to color something on a website or anywhere, that's a hex code. What a hex code is, is it's a six digit shorthand that's related to color in the computer. So the first two bits, or the top two bits are representing red, the middle two green, and the last two blue. What these are using is hexadecimal, which you might have heard of before, but all hexadecimal is, is base 16. So instead of having two to the power, all of these cards would have been 16 to the power. Now the benefit of that is we know that one of our places was 16. Two to the fourth is 16, which means that one bit in, represented in hexadecimal can represent four bits of binary. One character of hexadecimal gives you four bits of binary. So you can start to consolidate the ones and zeros and have them mean something new. Rather than having to write out tons of ones and zeros, we can consolidate it a little bit and get this nice shorthand. And we'll talk a little bit more about how those colors come together in 1121 if you end up taking it. Um, IPs and subnet masks, if you are interested in networking. Um, IP addresses give you four bytes of information. That's why the top value that you'll see is 255. That's also why subnet masks are 255, 255, 255, and zero, because the mask is used to hide all of those first three bytes. And so only the last byte, which is the host ID, is the information that gets shown. So we can kind of see how binary played into the design of our IPs and subnet masks. Also, if you've ever used any sort of ASCII art or kind of looked at an ASCII chart in general, text on the keyboard is actually binary information being converted and mapped to figure out what character to display. An emoji just makes use of more of those bytes to give you more possible characters to map to. Boop. So at the end of the day, everything that goes on in our computer comes back to ones and zeros, which might make it seem like our data is super objective and can't possibly be wrong. But Humans are the ones that designated how the binary information got interpreted. We also wrote the algorithms that process the data that's coming in, and we're the ones that interpret the meaning of those algorithms. So I'm going to turn it over to Todd here to talk a little bit more about exploring ethics in the field of computing. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, thank you for participating in chat. That is true, Vincent. Not every subnet mask is 255.255.255. Most of them are quite often, but yes, you are right. Not every single one is. <laughs> Great. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Brianna. Um, we're going to move on, and um, I'm going to introduce you to um, our next presenter. Thanks, everybody. Todd Arney, who's a lecturer in uh, applied computing. Um, and um, uh, students in applied computing will see Todd um, in a number of courses, but including one on, um, on cyber ethics. And that's what uh, Todd is going to talk about. Yeah, thanks, Chuck. And, and thanks, Brianna. That was a really great demonstration of, of, of binary numbers and, and how we use them every day, maybe without uh, even knowing. Um, so as Chuck was saying, my name is Todd Arney. Uh, one of the classes uh, that I really enjoy teaching is the uh, SAT 1700. It's a cyber ethics class, and it is a class you might be taking in your first year, so I hope, hopefully I'll see you right away in cyber ethics. Um, I put together a, a bit of a, a demo here. This is uh, what you can expect to see, you know, some of these exercises, some of these ideas are, are what you could expect to see in um, the cyber ethics class. So, uh, let's see if I can, uh, hopefully everybody can see my, my slides okay. Um, so, uh, 
the first question is we need to come up with some common language. Things like, you know, what is uh, cyber? What is ethics? You know, these sort of things. So what I'd like to do is uh, we're going to uh, try something with Zoom. We're going to break into breakout rooms. Um, what I'd like is uh, everybody to, to try to go to this document. I'll see if I can paste that into the uh, chat, if I can find the chat options. Uh, let's see, chat. And of course now I can't see chat options anywhere. Let me stop the share real quick. I will give some, there I've posted the, uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, I've posted the Google Doc link in to the uh, chat. So what I'd like you to do is uh, pull up this Google Doc, the share document. Uh, you'll be in a, a breakout room with uh, several other people, take seven minutes and let's uh, come up with as many definitions as you can. I'm not looking for textbook definitions. I'm not looking for you to look up the definitions. What we're doing here is we're just seeing where we're at and what, what sort of common language we have. So uh, let's go ahead and break into breakout rooms and uh, Kay, if you can keep an eye on the time, um, then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Looks like we got a lot of really, really good definitions. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people were able to uh, contribute to the shared document and um, add uh, a, a lot of really interesting information. Um, so I'm, I'm curious what, uh, what your experiences were with the, uh, the shared document and how well that worked. Um, and I'm, I'm curious of going over some of these uh, definitions together. However, in the interest of time, uh, I think we'll just go ahead and continue on with um, with what we're going to have some really simple definitions of uh, these. So uh, when we're looking at cyber, you know, people are saying, you know, something computer network, uh, digital, um, cyberspace from from uh, Neuromancer. That's uh, I actually give extra credit if you uh, read Neuromancer in the cyber ethics class. Um, but cyber really just when we're referring to it is just any technology. Really, it's any technology. So what the heck is ethics? Well, ethics we're just going to define as the study of morality. So now the question is, what the heck is morality? Um, the, the morality is your system of principles and rules and values. So then, you know, that brings up more definitions. Well, what are principles? Uh, principles are, are the basis which we use to evaluate morality or use to evaluate your actions. So you might uh, evaluate right and wrong based on law or religion or philosophy. So these are your principles of evaluation. Core values uh, are exactly what it sounds like. They're, they are things that um, you believe and you hold personally valuable. Uh, these are values of uh, the public rather than values of self. So those are core values. Um, so here's just a, a simple graphic showing this idea where your core values uh, contribute to your rules of conduct. We have our uh, religion, law, and philosophy as our evaluation. Um, this whole thing put together would define our moral system. Um, we have a couple more definitions. Uh, security, protecting yourself against internal and external threats. I like that. Um, what we define security as is this idea about protecting the technology system. Uh, when we talk about privacy, uh, I, I like uh, having um, information conserved from other entities. I, I very much like that. Uh, this idea where we have control over personal information is one of the key tenets in privacy. Uh, we also have non-intrusion you know, into your personal space or into your computer system, non-interference with decision making. Uh, these all make up uh, this concept of privacy. Um, the, the idea that security is a process, it's not a product that you end up with. And we also talk about uh, security as the CIAAN model when we're talking about things like confidentiality, integrity, availability, um, authenticity, and non-repudiation. Uh, bonus for anybody that can uh, answer, uh, see what uh, non-repudiation is in the, in the chat. 
Um, we talk about a privacy, again, this non-intrusion, non-interference control over personal information. Um, and again, we apply these to uh, hardware, software, uh, the, the communications, but you can also apply these concepts to people, places, uh, or people's procedures and products. Um, here's a, a simple graphic that I, I stole directly from that bastion of higher education that is Wikipedia. Uh, but it's a, it's a good sort of uh, overall graphic on how we integrate all of these things together. Um, what is uh, applied ethics? Uh, it, it's literally how can we apply these, these concepts in the real world. Uh, professional ethics sounds just like what it is. You know, how should professionals behave in the, in the workplace? How should professionals make decisions? And then we have this question about what in the heck is a professional? And these are long discussions, but it's, a, it's an interesting discussion about different traits that professionals all share in common. Okay, so that was a really, really quick run through. Uh, what I'd like you to do is, uh, if you can go to uh, kahoot.it and uh, we'll get you a pin to enter and uh, we'll go from there. So let me, uh, I'll bring up Kahoot on my system. And see, put Kahoot here and uh, we'll start the, the game. Classic. We will. Good old Kahoot music. Um, so I will uh, share my screen. Uh, let's see. Uh, hopefully you guys can see the, uh, the screen there. Um, with the uh, shared screen, so I will also put the number in the chat. It's 782707. We'll give it just a couple of minutes for, for people to, to join in. Okay, looks like we got several people, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the game. Please feel free to continue to join in as we go. So we, we just went over some of those definitions. Uh, let's see if any of them, I know we did it really, really fast, but let's see if any of those definitions took hold. So the question is, what is cyber? I think I'd have a hard time answering this one because it looks like all of those we consider cyber, right? Any technology, network technology, standalone technology, hardware, software, that's all what we, in this realm of this idea of cyber. Uh, great job, Jack, you're in first place. All right, let's get ready to catch up. So what, what is ethics? All right, great work, everybody. So the, the study of morality, that's, that's great. That's really, really good. Ryan, you've taken the lead. Uh, looks like we have a couple, couple new contenders here for the lead. Uh, here comes the next question. What is morality now? If ethics is the study of morality, what is morality? Great job. Again, you guys, you guys seem to be picking this up pretty quick. Emmett, you're in the lead. Principles. What are principles?
Great job. Great job. So principles for, are uh, to evaluate our, our actions uh, for evaluating morality. A couple of people climbing up in the ranks. Moral core values. Moral core values. This is a tough one. So the, I kept flip-flopping between these two. So it is beliefs that have value to you, that's your core value, and beliefs uh, that you apply to others. So it's this idea of uh, public, um, that makes it a moral core value. So it's the difference between um, I, I feel like I should eat versus I feel like everybody deserves access to healthy food. So public and private values. And it's still top of leaderboard. Just two questions left. Security, what is security? Protecting the system, great job. Last question. What is privacy? And these are concepts that we will talk about at length in the cyber ethics class. So it is the three tenets, this idea of non-intrusion, non-interference, and control over personal information. Privacy is not about hiding, it's about um, Again, those three canons. So how did we end up with? James in third, Ryan in second, and in first place. Great job, everybody. Um, so uh, let's see if I, I think I've got just a few more slides to, to wrap up. Um, so these are... Uh, you know, some basic terminologies that, that we can use to have a common language. Uh, but there are some really, really difficult questions. You know, the, these ideas of, um, you know, what uh, are cyber ethics issues unique? Are there, are there unique issues to cyber ethics? Is, or is bullying bullying? Is cyber bullying different than regular bullying? Uh, these, you know, these are these ideas of, of how technology is unique and has introduced new ethical uh, issues for us to deal with. If you've got nothing to hide, why do you care? Uh, this is a, a really, really interesting question um, that we will discuss at length in the cyber ethics class. Um, inherent bias in technology, uh, are algorithms biased? Uh, do some technologies deserve special moral considerations? These are tough questions, and these are questions that we'll, we'll tackle. So for a little bit of homework, um, and I'll paste these into the, uh, the chat, but there's a really good TED Talk that is definitely worth watching. Um, and there's also the moral machine where you get to make decisions about how you feel a computer should act. Uh, in these examples, they're a, a self-driving or autonomous car. Um, and you can see in this example, um, you have two choices. Uh, the car can either go straight and, and crash into a, a barrier, killing the occupant of the car, or the car can swerve, uh, killing the person crossing the street. Well, there's some other things that you should know. Uh, if you'll notice, the person crossing the street is doing it against the light, so the person crossing the street is doing it illegally. Um, the person crossing the street is um, so not in the right of way. The person driving the car um, would be, is there only one person in the car? So th this website will actually run you through several scenarios and you can come up with different justifications um, about why you felt uh, different scenarios should happen and then compare those answers to uh, everybody that's ever run these scenarios. So uh, again, that's just a, a, a really, really quick, brief example of some of the activities and topics that we'll be talking about in 
uh, cyber ethics. So I hope to see you there. Good. Uh, thanks so much, Todd, for, uh, for that great presentation. Um, let's see, we're going to move on. Um, we've, uh, in addition to uh, the, the faculty, um, we've also got uh, student groups around uh, campus uh, in, within the College of Computing that, um, that uh, are involved in um, different kinds of activities. And uh, we have one student group uh, that's going to give a, a, a presentation on what, uh, on what they do. It's uh, Copper Country Coders. Um, this is a group that works with um, middle school and high school students um, in the community and uh, introduces students to um, computer science and, and programming. Um, and so I'm going to, uh, first of all, ask who from the Copper Country Coders group is, is here with us. I see Amanda, Katie. Who else is with us? Laura? You, uh, does everyone want to do themselves a little bit? Um, I can, I'm going to share a screen. I've got your slides up here. So, I'll, so folks, you want to uh, introduce yourselves? Yeah. So hi, I'm Katie. I'm a third year computer science student here at Tech, and I'm the current president of Copper Country Coders. Um, Laura, do you want to? Yeah, I, hi. I'm also a third year CS major. And I'm the current secretary of Copper Country Coders. And Amanda? Are you going with what year we were in last year or what year we're going into? What year you're going into. Like okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, my name's Amanda. I'm the vice president of Copper Country Coders and I'm going into my fourth year. All right. So check you. So Copper Country Coders, we're a student group of both undergrads and grad students dedicated to teaching computer science skills to middle and high school students. So we have taught all sorts of things, everything from video game design to hardware design um, to just the very basics of what is computer science with block language. So, this year is a little weird because we can't be in person, but we're still planning on teaching some courses remotely. In the past, we've always met in Brecky Hall, which is the main CS building, which you can see a picture of here, um, every Saturday for about two hours where we would teach various projects about um, computing. And then, so we're looking for more people who are interested in being assistants or leaders and you don't have to be a CS expert. I started in my first year. I came in, I knew some programming, but not very much. But coders really helped me solidify what I knew and also gave me the opportunity to be able to explore something new so that way I could teach it to others as well. So these are just some examples of some things that we've taught in previous classes. Um, you can see a little gif of the guy jumping. That was one of the video games that we made in the previous class. Uh, we also use the block language snap, which is what is also used in 1121 as well. And we've taught some other languages, Python, Java, processing, basically anything our leaders are interested in teaching. And then next slide. So uh, now Laura and Amanda are going to take some time to talk a little bit more about classes they've taught. Uh, Laura, do you want to? Yeah. Uh, so last year, Katie and I taught a class we called Raspberry Pis and Python. Uh, if you don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, it's a little tiny computer that has pretty good processing for its size. And it was, not only is it a lot of fun because you get to be childish and teach code, uh, but we basically just taught them first the hardware, how to properly handle hardware and a Raspberry Pi and what it's like. And then we taught the language Python. We started from the very basics of syntax all the way to the logic behind loops and a bunch of other things. Um, one project we did was a text-based game where there was user input that you gave and you had to have a specific like, answer out of a list of answers. And once you got that, it determined whether you won or lost. It was pretty simple, but pretty fun to teach. And there's just a bunch of other stuff. We also did LED lights connected to the 
Raspberry Pi. So it you can start out as simple as you want and go deeper. They catch on pretty quick. And yeah, it's pretty fun. Hey, Laura, how much Python did you know before you taught the class? Literally none. I knew zero <laughs> Python. I taught myself a little bit of syntax two weeks before class started and went from there. It was great. Awesome. And Amanda? And then I taught a DIY Arduino course. And that course mostly focused on the interactions between hardware and software components. Uh, because of this, our, the language that we used the most was C. So we have a bit of a lower level language there. And in some of the cool projects that we did last year was we did an automatic lock for a door and we also created a video game controller at least a very basic one awesome um uh, amanda what is was your favorite part about teaching your class last year uh i guess since working with Arduinos is primarily how i learned coding i'm glad i got to share that with my students Awesome. I also like building the projects, honestly. I mean, half of it's like, this is how we do stuff, and then like, this is what we do with that knowledge. So I like combining those two components. Awesome. So I know this was a pretty brief introduction. Does anybody have any questions? You can either unmute yourself or throw some, something into the chat if you have any immediate questions right now. Yeah, I think, I think maybe the, the best thing, we will put things in the chat if, you, if you've got questions. Um, uh, also, you know, there's, um, we've got an email address up here for um, anyone who's interested. Uh, there's a website and also an email address for, for more information so you can get in touch with us that way as well. Um, but also if there, if there are things you want to, questions uh, answered right now, um, we can, uh, you can throw them in the Zoom chat too, so. Um, it's uh, it's a great group. We, we hope we can get uh, some some more some more of you uh, interested. It really is um, you know one of the best ways to learn about computer science is to teach it. I think that that's a lesson that um, we learn over and over again. So um, hope we can get more of you involved. Okay. Thanks so much. All right. Awesome. Thank okay. you guys. I appreciate it. Okay. So um, good. We are um, down to our last uh, event. Uh, of the evening, and um, this is a um, this is a chance for uh, for all of you to uh, talk to the department chairs um, of the, the two departments, uh, applied computing and, and computer science. Um, and we're we're going to set up uh, breakout rooms so that you can um, you can meet with them. Uh, let me introduce um, both of those people. Uh, we have uh, Linda Ott, who's the chair of uh, computer science. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'll be in the breakout room if you have any questions. I don't have any formal presentation, just there to answer questions. Right. This is this is truly, uh, yeah, right, exactly. This, there's a, this is it going to be a PowerPoint or anything. This is just, if you have questions about uh, science uh, programs, um, this is you know your chance to talk to the chair. Um, cool. So that's, uh, that's Linda. And uh, we also have Dan Furman with us. Um, who is the chair of the Applied Computing Department. And Dan, you want to say hi? Hey, everybody. I'm uh, 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 interim chair of the uh, uh, Department of Applied Computing, which is the newest academic unit at Michigan Tech. We just started less than a month ago. Uh, but we have programs uh, that have been around for a while. So I'll be in, uh, including electrical engineering technologies, computer network and system administration, and some new programs from electronics and cybersecurity. So anyway, I'll be in the chat room ready to talk to anyone about that. Sounds good. Um, okay, so um, what we're gonna what we're going to do is, um, if you'd like to talk to um, uh, either uh, Linda in computer science or Dan in applied computing, um, we're gonna have you uh, indicate your uh, your preference um, in a sort of a funny way, but I think it'll be effective. Um, if you uh, if you look at the uh, list of participants and, and see your yourself listed. Um, you'll, if you, um, 
you'll see there's an option to, uh, to rename yourself. Um, and what I'm going to have you do, I'm going to do it to myself and Charles Wallace, but I'm going to uh, put, so if you put either CS for computer science or AC uh, at the beginning of your name, so I'm going to change myself to CS Charles Wallace. Um, that's going to be a, a, a signal to, um, to K uh, that uh, you want to go to the, the computer science or the applied computing uh, breakout room. So um, go ahead and uh, change your, um, change your name in Zoom so that it's got either CS or AC in it. Um, and Kay's going to uh, look through the names and, uh, and put people into, um, into the breakout rooms. Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll let you do that. Um, this is sort of the, um, the, the end of our, uh, of our session for, uh, for today. We're going to have another session next week, um, and that one's going to focus more on, um, on faculty. And we're going to have faculty talk about you know, their, their sort of areas. Um, and so, you will, again, we'll have breakout rooms, and you can go and talk you know, if you're interested in particular areas of like computing or computer science. You can talk to, pe uh, to, to faculty in that, in that area. So that's, um, that, that'll be coming next week. Okay, so um, I'm going to uh, bid you adieu for, uh, for, for today. Um, please feel free to, to join one of the breakout uh, rooms and, um, uh, and talk to the department chairs. And hopefully we'll see you next, um, next Wednesday. Okay.